The connect phase is the second part of your inbound sales strategy. The way you identify your leads makes a huge difference in how effectively you can connect with them. Far too many salespeople focus their prospecting efforts on cold, uncustomized emails and voicemails. These kinds of tactics result in cold leads that aren't especially eager to talk to the salesperson in the first place. Modern buyers know that they can get more insight by doing an online search than by taking a cold call from a salesperson. So they let calls go to voicemail and delete the messages as soon as they realize it's just another salesperson. As an inbound salesperson, you'll reach out to buyers in a different way. You'll lead with a message that's personalized to the buyer's context. You'll make an offer aligned with the awareness stage of the buyer's journey. And when you get a prospective buyer on the phone, you'll seek to understand the buyer's interests and needs and offer to help where you can. Now you might be thinking, I thought this was inbound sales. Why are we talking about making outbound calls? It's important to remember that inbound is a philosophy. It encourages companies to be human, helpful, and holistic. By human, we mean taking an empathetic, personable approach to doing business. By helpful, we mean providing people the insight and guidance they need at each step of the buyer's journey. And by holistic, we mean providing the same level of human, helpful service to people at every stage of the life cycle, whether they're strangers, prospects, or customers. If your outreach is human, helpful, and holistic, it's inbound. If your outreach focuses solely on trying to push a product, it isn't. If your current sales strategy isn't especially inboundy, changing to an inbound sales strategy might take a lot of work, but it will be worth it. Your prospects will be happier to talk to you, and that will make your outreach more enjoyable and effective. During the connect phase of your inbound sales strategy, you'll connect with leads that you've sourced in a variety of ways, but the most valuable ones will be inbound leads. An inbound lead is a person who has visited your website and identified themselves in some way. Of all your lead sources, inbound leads will typically have the most context around the specific interests of the buyer. For example, you may know the buyer reads specific blog articles or pages on your website. You may know that the buyer received five emails from your organization and opened two of them on a related topic. You may know the buyer retweeted certain types of content in social media. All of these actions are indications of the buyer's specific interests. To get a deeper understanding of buyer interests, define the categories of interests your buyers might have that your company can help with. For example, if you're representing a recruiting firm, your buyers may have the following categories of interests. Increase the quality of new hires, increase the pace of hiring, decrease the cost per hire, reallocate the time hiring managers spend on sourcing to higher value activities. The interest categories for your product or service may be different from these, but if you can list out the problems you help your customers solve and map those problems to the content on your website, you'll be able to come into your connect calls with a pretty good idea of the problem your prospect is trying to solve. Initially, it might be challenging to connect certain buyer actions to your interest categories. However, this connection will become clearer as you gain experience with your buyers. When you observe buyer actions and connect these actions to interest categories, you can then use interest-specific content to your outreach efforts. Armed with relevant content to address your inbound leads specific problems, you'll be ready to connect in a helpful inbound way. When it comes to contacting inbound leads, picking up the phone is definitely worthwhile. Unlike traditional cold calling, which often does more harm than good, calling inbound leads greatly increases the likelihood of turning that lead into a customer. One study found that calling such leads within five minutes, as opposed to waiting even just half an hour, increased odds of qualifying 21 times. Another advantage of calling quickly is that you'll be more likely to get that person on the phone. That same study found that you'll be 10 times more likely to have a conversation with a lead if you call them within five minutes rather than waiting an hour. If you can be that fast, your prospect will be surprised at your speed, and most of the time, it'll be a happy surprise. If you reach out in a helpful way, they'll be delighted to hear from you and think about how that will change the tone of the initial conversation. 
Instead of spending the first 30 seconds of the call trying to convince the buyer not to hang up on you, you'll be able to dive right into providing content that's relevant to a problem you know they're experiencing. Your next step is to find a time to discuss. Schedule a meeting or a phone call with them when they have more time to talk. And then you'll be ready to move to the explore phase of your inbound sales strategy. Now, it might not always be possible to call every lead immediately. If it's been a few hours or days since the lead came in, it's still worthwhile to reach out to them. But you might need to remind them about the action they took that turned them into a lead. Here's an example of how that conversation might go. Hello? Hi Mary, this is Dan from Tire Recruiting. Oh, how can I help you? You downloaded one of our ebooks earlier today on tips to recruit engineering talent. Oh right, I remember. I'm interested to understand. What were you looking for help with? Um, well, we're having trouble winning the top sales talent in the area because we don't sell expensive products and can't really afford to pay at the top of the scale. Ah, uh, yes. We just went through this issue with a client of ours in the Northeast. They were a software company with financial software for small businesses. What have you tried so far? Continue to ask the buyer about their specific situation and provide help where you can. At some point, you will either naturally transition the conversation into the explore phase or agree to set up an exploratory call together. If you get a prospect's voicemail, leave a short message stating who you are and why you're calling. Be sure to reference the action they took because they may have forgotten about it by the time they get your message. For example, if they downloaded a piece of content, mention its title and ask them if they found the information they were looking for. Always offer to help in some way. Depending on the action they took, you might want to offer them some other content related to their interest category. End the message by telling them you'll send a follow-up email, and then send them a short message that includes any content you promised to them. Now, if you've been in sales for any amount of time, you probably know what it's like to feel as though all the voicemails and emails you send to people fall into a black hole. But your inbound leads might surprise you by how readily they respond. Not all of them will, but if you're reaching out in a truly helpful way, many of them will engage with you. So your Connect strategy needs to include a plan for fielding responses to your voicemails and emails. Email responses are easier to handle. The buyer's response is an indication that the buyer believes you can help them with a priority, goal, or challenge. Schedule a meeting or phone call when you can dig into their needs, and then you'll have successfully navigated to the explore phase of your inbound sales strategy. If an inbound lead calls you in a response to a voicemail you left them, use that as an opportunity to launch into a connect call, like the one we discussed earlier. The only difference will be that they'll know who you are because of the information you left in your message, so you'll be able to jump straight into scheduling an exploratory call. Now, if you're in business-to-business -business sales, there's another scenario you might find yourself in when it comes to contacting inbound leads, contacting anonymous leads. If you're calling a company that has shown interest in your offerings, but that you don't have a specific contact at, you need to focus on the content the people there will have shown interest in. For example. Hello. Hi, Mary. This is Dan from Tire Recruiting. Okay. We have received a few inquiries from people at your company for information on increasing hiring quality. Really? From who? That's what I was hoping you could help me with. They didn't leave their name. Is there someone in your organization that might be focused on that issue? Maybe Bob in recruiting. Do you know why he would be looking for information on sales hiring quality? We've had some issues there. Issues? Similar to the inbound lead situation, continue to ask the buyer about their specific situation. Provide help where you can and transition to the explore phase, either on this call or during a follow-up call. Now, not every inbound lead you contact will be ready to move to the explore phase, and that's okay. Position yourself as an advisor that they can rely on for helpful information, and then share content with them from time to time to maintain that relationship. They'll come around eventually. To sum up, inbound leads are your most valuable leads. Connect with them as quickly as possible by reaching out with content related to their interests. From there, it should be smooth sailing to the explore phase on your inbound sales strategy.
If you don't have enough inbound leads to keep you busy, there are other ways to source leads that are almost as good. One of these is watching for trigger events, and the other is leveraging common connections. Let's start with trigger events. What is a trigger event? A trigger event is anything that indicates that you could provide immediate value to someone. These might be things like press releases, news articles, or social media mentions or hashtags. You should be watching multiple communication channels for any mention of something you can help with. For example, if you work for a recruiting agency and a potential buyer publishes a job posting for a sales hire, that would be an indication that they might need your agency's help. The trigger events you should be watching for depend entirely on the solution you provide. But if you can identify a trigger event from a prospect that you know is a good fit for your offering, that's a great reason to reach out. When making connect calls that originate from trigger events, you should focus on the trigger event first and then explore whether the trigger event implies a goal or challenge you can help with. For example, Hello. Hi, Mary. This is Dan from Tire Recruiting. Okay. I just read your new job posting on the account executive position. Yes, you need to submit your resume to Bob in Recruiting. The email's on the job ad. Actually, I was not calling about applying to the job. I was calling because we published a popular ebook amongst your peers on writing job ads that attract sales rock stars. Based on those best practices, I had a few suggestions on the ad. Okay, what do you think? Provide suggestions. Transition into what changes led to the trigger event and what they're most worried about with the process. Help where you can and transition to the explore phase when it's right. If you call and don't get the person on the phone, leave a voicemail referencing the trigger event and a helpful piece of content you'd like to share with them. Then send an email with the promised information. If they respond, provide help where you can and transition to the explore phase. Another great way to source leads is by leveraging common connections. A common connection is any person you and your prospect both know. It might be a friend or colleague or even a family member. Common connections are extremely effective during the connect phase because it elevates you from being a stranger to being an acquaintance. To use common connections, first define the categories of common connections. For example, one of your customers may refer a potential buyer. One of your fellow employees knows a potential buyer. An acquaintance outside of your organization knows a potential buyer. Your categories may be different, and that's okay. The important thing is to develop specific content for people in each category. Once you have that, start asking your connections to introduce you to your target prospect. If they aren't willing to make an introduction, Ask them if you can use their name in your outreach. Either way, having a common connection will be invaluable during the connect phase. When you contact someone through a common connection, use the opening 30 seconds to mention the common connection and explain why they thought it was a good idea for you and your prospect to talk. Here's how that might sound. Hello. Hi, Mary. This is Dan from Tire Recruiting. What can I do for you? Kevin Harris over at XYZ Partners suggested I reach out to you. Oh, he did? Why? I was speaking to him about some of the success we have with recruiting salespeople. He mentioned you were struggling in that area the last time you spoke and suggested I reach out. Oh, okay. I remember that conversation. How is recruiting salespeople progressing? We're still struggling. On what aspect are you struggling specifically? And so on. If you can identify a need that you can help with, then you'll know it's time to transition to the explore phase of your inbound sales strategy. If you can't identify a need you can help with, don't push. Share any relevant content you might have and move on to another lead. If you get the person's voicemail, leave a message referencing your common connection and a helpful piece of content you'd like to share with them. Then send an email with the promised information. If they respond, provide help where you can and transition to the explore phase when you've identified a need you can help with. To sum up, trigger events and common connections are both excellent tools for sourcing new leads. As you reach out to these leads, start the conversation with the event or connection that brought them to your attention and then look for ways you can help. 
The purpose of the connect phase of your inbound strategy is to confirm that the prospect has a problem you can help with and to set up a time when you can explore that problem in depth. Typically, this can be accomplished in a single short conversation. There's just one problem. There's a pretty good chance that you won't be able to get the person on the phone the first time you call. Modern buyers are busy and they aren't eager to take calls from phone numbers they don't recognize. Similarly, some of the leads you connect with won't be ready to move to the explore phase. So there are three things you need to do. Keep finding helpful ways to reach out. Use technology to automate certain parts of your outreach and be ready to transition to the explore phase of your inbound sales strategy. Let's talk about each of these. First, you need to keep finding helpful ways to reach out to your prospect so they'll think of you when they're ready to make a move. The key word here is helpful. If you ever use the phrase just checking in, chances are you've run out of value you can add. One way to avoid that is to create a sequence of content you can share at regular intervals until a lead is ready to move forward. The most important consideration when you develop these sequences is to personalize each step of your outreach to the individual buyer. If you haven't created buyer personas yet, now's a great time to do it. A buyer persona is a semi-fictional representation of your ideal customer based on real data about demographics, behavior patterns, motivations, and goals. If you put in the necessary work to develop a robust buyer persona, you can use that to fill in the blanks when you don't know everything about a particular lead. You'll be able to say things like, I've worked with other people in your situation, and here's something that really helps them. Another important consideration as you develop the sequence content is to keep in mind that most of your prospects are going to be in the awareness stage of the buyer's journey, meaning they're still trying to diagnose the problem they have. So the goal of your sequences shouldn't be to sell them your product or service or even to get them to see a demo. Instead, your goal should be to build your credibility with your buyer so they'll trust your advice and want to spend more time with you. The best way to do that is to educate them on a goal or challenge they're currently facing. Here are a few additional best practices to consider when defining the content for each sequence in your outreach strategy. Inventory your existing content. Review any blog articles, ebooks, webinars, presentations, or case studies that your company has developed. Also, check your sent items folder in your email. Typically, you'll find emails to prospects that will serve as excellent templates. Note any content that is particularly effective at addressing the unique perspectives of each persona that you documented while building your buyer personas. The gap in the content you find serve as a content roadmap for you in the future. For example, you may find that you have lots of content for a particular type of challenge or industry or buyer role. However, there are other important segments you do not have content for. Or you might have a lot of content that's too generic and not specific enough to different personas. In the future, you can target your content development to fill those gaps. Keep messages short. Voicemails should be less than 15 seconds. Emails should be less than 200 words. Reference the buyer at least twice as much as you mention yourself. This feedback applies to company mentions, personal mentions, the word I, and the word you. And all emails with a question. The question should be short and on a separate line. It should be focused on identifying a challenge or goal. For example, if you mention you've heard great things about their sales team, you should ask, how do you find such great salespeople? If you're asking for time, be explicit about how much you're looking for. For example, when do you have 15 minutes to speak? Focus on being helpful. Try to sound like a human who is trying to help a fellow human solve a problem, not a robot who's trying to make a sale. Personalize email subject lines. For emails specifically, the subject line is the most important element. It's the first impression your contacts get of your email. And if they don't like it, they won't open it. Figure out a way to express the goal you can help them with in three words or less. Try to keep it below 30 characters, because if your email gets opened on a mobile device, your subject line's going to get cut off at that point anyway.
Use a personal voice and style. If you're using content that someone else at your company created, edit it to make it sound like it's coming from you. Following these best practices will greatly improve your success in connecting with your leads. A common question during this step is, what if my company doesn't have much online content for me to share? If that's the situation you're in, there are two important things you should bear in mind. First, useful content doesn't have to be from your company. There's probably a lot of content by thought leaders, authors, executives, and non-competitive firms in your space. If the content is high quality and aligned with your buyer's area of interest, share it. Your prospects are likely new to the goal or challenge you're helping them with. They don't have your depth of experience in this area. They'll appreciate your help finding high quality educational content that's relevant to their situation. The other thing to keep in mind is that a free consultation is a great way to personalize an offer directly to the buyer's area of interest. It might be a consultation with you or someone else at your company. Either way, if you can provide them a consultation that's relevant to their goals and challenges, they'll likely appreciate the help. And you'll benefit by building trust and learning more about them. Once you know what content you want to share, you need to figure out what a strategy is for doing so. Ask yourself, which mediums will you use to reach out to each persona? Phone, email, in person, social media? When will you reach out, before work, after work, during lunch? If you don't connect on the first outreach, when will you try again? Will you reach out the next day, two days later, a week? How many times will you reach out before you give up? Response rates often rise with each subsequent outreach attempt. But when you surpass five touch points, the law of diminishing returns comes into play. In other words, a seventh touch point is not much more effective than a sixth. Is there a specific order that your content should be shared in? Does one piece of content build on the next? Is one piece more advanced than another? Make sure you're sending the content in an order that makes sense and will deepen the prospect's understanding of the areas they've shown interest in. By answering these questions, you'll be able to develop an outreach sequence for each of your personas. But once you have a lead you're trying to connect with, it's important to remember that a lead is a person, not a persona. When you start working with a specific person, make sure you're using real information about them rather than general information about your persona. If the person matches persona well, the broad strokes of your sequence shouldn't have to change, but you'll still want to personalize each step of the sequence to the specific person you're sending it to. Remember, personalization is at the heart of inbound sales, so every message you send should be personalized to the person receiving it. In many cases, this won't take more than a couple of seconds to do. It can be as simple as mentioning a sports team in their city or even the weather. These little touches don't take long to add, and the response you get from your leads will be much, much better than if you just send a generic message to everyone. It's also worth noting that the rise of inbound marketing and social media has presented additional places to connect with potential buyers beyond phone, email, and in person. If the buyer's company has a blog, you can subscribe to the blog, post news articles on your social media account, and comment on blog articles. You can also mention articles written on the blog as part of your outreach to the potential buyer to show them that you know the things they're interested in. If the buyer is active on social media, you can send an invitation to connect on LinkedIn, follow the buyer on Twitter, and retweet their content, and so on. If the buyer follows you back, you can choose to message the buyer as part of an outreach sequence. If the buyer conducts a webinar, you can attend and send a follow-up email to the buyer regarding the lessons you learned during the webinar. Or if the buyer hosts or speaks at an in-person event, you can attend the event and introduce yourself after the speech with a contextual comment around points you found interesting. As you incorporate these non-traditional mediums into your connect sequences, be mindful of the appropriate timing for each type of outreach. For example, don't send an invitation to connect on social media until after you've shared valuable content with the buyer. Make sure you've built up some trust and credibility with the buyer before attempting to strengthen the relationship. 
The next thing you should do during the connect phase of your inbound strategy is to use technology to automate certain parts of your outreach. It's worth noting that you don't need advanced technology to execute a high quality connection with a prospect. Most of it can be executed with Word documents and spreadsheets. However, the right technology can be helpful in executing a great connection. Here are some technology use cases you might want to consider trying. An email template tool to develop your buyer persona templates. Ideally, the folders in the email template tool can be organized around the various personas. It's also helpful if the templates are accessible wherever you are, such as in your email, on the web, or in your CRM. People like this type of technology because it can drastically speed up the amount of time that prospecting takes, and it helps sales teams get detailed analytics on what's working and what's not. A CRM that illustrates buyer activity that you can review as you prepare for each outreach. Easy access to buyer activity accelerates the process of uncovering buyer interests or additional mediums that help you connect with the buyer. It's especially helpful if the CRM automatically logs your outreach. Auto-logging of your outreach means you can focus on helping buyers rather than being bogged down on administrative work. Also, auto-logging of your outreach helps you be more organized with your sequences. A meeting scheduling tool that makes it easier to find a time for an exploratory call. You don't want the difficulty of coordinating calendars to be the thing that kills a sales conversation. There are a variety of tools that can automate this process for you so you can focus on having the conversation instead of just scheduling it. An email tool that helps you set up a sequence and automate some of its execution. When you decide which persona a particular lead falls into, you can save time if you can set up the entire sequence at that moment. The tool should be prompt when an outreach is due or could even automate the next outreach for you if it's appropriate. So those were some examples of technology that can help you develop great connections with your prospects. Be careful with the following technology. Mail merge. Mail merge enables salespeople to email dozens or hundreds of prospects in a single click. Many salespeople like this feature because it's a quick way to surface one or two potential buyers in order to save a month or quarter. However, Mail Merge offers minimal personalization. Most recipients can recognize the impersonal outreach and immediately delete the message. Users of Mail Merge fail to account for the negative experience the buyer has with this tactic and the effects it has on the company's brand. Auto dialers. Auto-dialers rapidly call prospect lists and surface connections to the salesperson when a buyer picks up the phone. The issue here is the salesperson has no time to review the buyer's context before they speak with the buyer. The salesperson must revert to a generic, impersonal pitch with the buyer, which rarely leads to success. The last thing you need to do during the connect phase of your inbound sales strategy is be ready to transition to the explore phase. The time will come to make this transition, so you need to be ready for it. You'll know this has happened when they confirm they're interested in discussing a particular goal or challenge with you. At that point, you need to get buy-in for a longer exploratory conversation, which is the next phase of your inbound sales strategy. Here's what getting buy-in might sound like. We're struggling to attract enough quality sales candidates to meet our growth goals. I've heard that a few times. What have you tried so far? Not sure I want to share our secrets, but some of the things we've done is asking for referrals from our current employees, sending messages through LinkedIn, and offering a bonus to our current employees when they refer someone that we hire. But that's not getting you the quality and quantity you need? It helped us increase the quantity, but not enough. Plus, the quality wasn't really as high compared to when I do it myself. I'm not sure what to do next. I really don't want to lower my quality bar, but I'm afraid that might be necessary given the lack of talent out there. Sounds like you're running out of ideas and it's time to fix this. Is it a high priority at this point? Yeah, very high. I need to make 10 hires this quarter and I'm way behind where I should be. Based on what you're doing, I believe we may be able to help you. Would it be a good use of your time to talk through some additional ways you could catch up and then hit that target without sacrificing quality? Yes, if you can do that, it would definitely be worth my time. 
Okay, I have some availability tomorrow. What time works for you? Around 11 a.m. or 4 p.m.? 11 won't work for me, but I can do 4 p.m. Should I call you on this number? That'd be great. Looking forward to talking to you. To sum up, connecting with your leads might take multiple attempts, so you need to keep finding helpful ways to reach out, use technology to automate certain parts of your outreach, and always be ready to transition to the explore phase of your inbound strategy. Throughout it all, focus on being helpful, 